Today we're going to be talking about Medicom's War, also known as King Philip's War. It's one of the very important terms from the APUSH curriculum, specifically period two. Here's your definition. Series of assaults from 1675 to 1678 between the Wampanoag with other American Indian allies and English colonists in New England. The attacks slowed the westward migration of New England settlers for several decades and virtually ended Native American resistance in the region. So looking at the causes of war, we can see that there is um, long-term sources and also the immediate catalyst. So thinking about what's happening in the 1600s is we have continual encroachments onto Native American lands and their lifestyle. So the forced implementation of the Puritan religious values, as well as continual expansion of the white settlements. Um, a failure of diplomacy um, began to occur as there were a new generation of leaders. So in 1607, there were leaders of both the Puritans and the Wampanoag, and now those leaders have been replaced. So Massasoit was the um, leader of the Wampanoag for some time and maintained a friendship with the Puritans. Um, but when his son, King Philip, as the English called him, also known as Medicom, um, took over, that started to cause some changes between the two groups. The immediate catalyst is that there was a praying Indian, someone who had taken on the Puritan values. His name was John Sassamon, and he um, told the English that there was going to be a coming rebellion by the Wampanoag. And then a few weeks later, his body was found. He had been murdered. And so the English execute three Wampanoag for that murder. And that's what is the, the spark that really begins this massive war in New England. So what begins is the English begin to um, flee their settlements, and then the Wampanoag come and burn their abandoned homes. Uh, the English will respond, um, and entire towns end up being burned with extremely high casualties. Um, one of the largest events that happens is called the Great Swamp Fight. And this is where a neutral group, the Narragansett, were attacked by the English, and it was um, devastating. Uh, the way that the uh, English fought war was ex incredibly different than the way that American Indians did. American Indians typically had very low casualties and took captives um, who then were sometimes adopted into the families of the tribe, and whereas the English were um, more likely to completely annihilate entire villages. In the winter of 1675 to 1676, it the outcome was pretty unclear. It was a lot of back and forth. Um, but then by the summer of 17, 1676, the Wampanoag began to run low on supplies and the English flipped some of the allies to actually support the English. Here's a quote by a historian um, named Jill Lepore. Always brutal and everywhere fierce, King Philip's War proved not only the most fatal war in all of American history, but also one of the most merciless, a landscape of ashes, of farms laid waste, of corpses without heads. So really the significance here is that it's arguably the most murderous conflict when you look at the uh, proportion of the population killed. So you can see some t statistics there. 5% of the total English and 40% of American Indians were killed. Um, the previous coexistence that took place was essentially broken down. And the... Um, the people who lived in the area also changed. So many American Indians were sold into slavery when the English won. Um, and other American Indians ended up moving westward um, and kind of becoming more um, um, absolved into other American Indian tribes. It really began a new kind of warfare that would be significantly more catastrophic um, no more limited casualties, no more sparing of women and children. Um, it really was a more um, drastic and thorough type of warfare that occurred after this. Um, and it, the, one of the significant pieces is that this is one of the first widespread uprisings of American Indian groups. So uh, one of the first alliances that took place of various American Indians against the English. 
So there you have um, a quick little vocab word uh, that's essential for period two A push. Uh, for more on interactions with American Indians and um, early colonial history, you can check out uh, the video on um, topic 2.5 of the curriculum, which I will link above. So please like and subscribe, add a question or comment if you have any.